The NBA wants the cream of the crop to rise to the top during the NBA playoffs, and the league's Board of Governors unanimously approved a plan that puts your overall win-loss record at the forefront of your playoff eligibility. So what do these changes mean for competitive balance throughout the association? Friend of the program, Ronald Ages, a contributing writer to ESPN's True Hoop Network, rejoin the show on Friday to break down the new playoff outlook. Ronald, uh, first of all, it's good to see you again, and we want to uh, welcome you back uh, to the Two Man Advantage podcast as we get you uh, geared up to uh, uh, start another NBA season. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Always, always a good time uh, hanging out with you, man. Uh, so the NBA uh, recently changed their uh, playoff seeding format uh, to allow that the top seeds are um, placed in the playoffs based on their record and not based on whether the fact they win the division. I'm just wondering your initial thoughts on the uh, new playoff proposal or playoff seeding uh, format. Actually, thank God. So in other words, basically what the NBA is trying to cut out is teams taking taking nights off, a.k.a. Um, San Antonio, during the season. I understand it's a long season. I understand you have to preserve your star, your star players. But the one guy I do feel sorry for is basically the NBA is trying to bring, trying to get the personality of what Tom, the former uh, coach of the Chicago Bulls, Tom Thibodeau, did. We're going to come out and play hard every night and try to win every game. Unfortunately, he got Tom Thibodeau fired. But what we what, what uh, the NBA is trying to cut out, they're trying to get a, a good quality product on the floor every single night. I mean, think about it this way. If you had a chance to watch LeBron James and you're you, you're playing on the West Coast, West, Co- West Coast, and they only play the Cleveland Cavaliers a couple times a year, and he sits down for rest, but you don't pay $250 of your money to watch this guy play. That's not good for business. Fans play good, pay good money to watch the top players in the world play. Plus, it's good for competition of the NBA. In other words, because um, they're still behind the NFL, and I guess they're trying. I guess Adam Silver is trying to uh, rectify that. Now, how do you think the change in the playoff shooting format will affect the way uh, coaches and players manage? both the season in terms of how many games they have to win to make the playoffs? And do you think that uh, uh, this will have a damaging effect on players in their physical health at all or no? Um, it's going to be hard to say right now because we're going to see if the, how, they, um, how they deal with the changes. Um, I think we'll feel – I think it will be more of a case in the Western Conference as – to the Eastern Conference. Eastern Conference got three, maybe four teams that you know have a chance to make the finals. Um, the West is so deep. I mean, teams that can win 45, 46, 47 games, they turn out to be the ninth or tenth seed, which in the Eastern Conference, that's the fifth seed. Yeah, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with play- teams like uh, the San Antonio Spurs, who, who are older squad with Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, who came back, uh, Tony Parker, these older players that they depend on very much. Um, the LA Clippers, who they're going through a different, they're going through their change in dynamics as well. So it's going to be very interesting. And even the Houston Rockets, who Dwight Howard, who is getting older and, and is prone to injury, it's going to be interesting that they have to continue to win just to get those top seeds. Because as you saw last year, they went down to the they went to the last game of the season. Uh, the Spurs losing uh, losing their last game of the season. They dropped from the second seed second seed to the sixth seed. So watching them, how they deal with the resting of their players, and also I guess the players are going to have to do a better job of adjusting to the situation and um, being competitive as possible to win the games that they're supposed to win as opposed to just saying, okay, we lost, we're on to the next city. It's going to be kind of like the 80s, in the early 80s with um, 
the L.A. Lakers watching the Boston Celtics or the Sixers in the, or in the New York Knicks when they were good. Um, it's going to be back to the – I guess the NBA is trying to get back to the glory days of the competitiveness. So do you think uh, the NBA will eventually lead to a system where all uh, 16 teams are based on record and not whether uh, they play in a particular conference? Well, in the next first, uh, in the next five years, no, I don't think so. I think it's kind of a case where they're going to try and and feel feel out what they can do, and it's kind of like an exploratory phase right now, kind of like at the NCAA uh, football championship uh, for the national title. Um, I hope not. I really hope it does not happen that way. Um, I think cases, NBA is kind of a case of like matchups. Um, Sometimes teams can get hot in the in, uh, in the end. Um, they can you catch a team, catch a high seeded team at the right time and end up winning. Uh, a couple of examples like uh, the Brooklyn Nets and the uh, Atlanta Hawks last year. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets were 30 and 44. They barely made the playoffs, but they um, matched up well against the uh, Atlanta Hawks. Um, but Lopez was the matchup problem that. Um, Al Horford and the front line of the Atlanta Hawks couldn't deal with. So with that being said, um, they end up taking the taking the uh, series a little bit longer than they should than they should have. A lot of people thought it was a sweep. I remember saying something in a radio radio interview that uh, the Brooklyn Nets had a chance if they did get the ball to, down to uh, Brook Lopez, and I thought it would go six games as opposed to being a sweep like most people uh, most people expected. Uh, and also, if you remember back in 1994, the um, different the Denver Nuggets ended up beating um, the Super, Seattle SuperSonics, being the first team, first eight seed to beat the number one seed. So I don't think that'd be a good idea. But do, I do think eventually down the line, five maybe ten years down the line, if there's enough heat, if it puts up gets enough heat or brings up enough traction, it could be done. Now, what do you think the playoff move will do for the popularity of the sport? Um, not much. I don't think so with, with this format, regardless. Um, the reason, I think part of the reason is based on the NBA changing their marketing strategy. Um, back in the, eight, in the early 80s with uh, Magic Bird, Dr. J era, they marketed the teams. I think uh, Boston, it was like East Coast, West Coast. Magic's Lakers versus Larry Bird's Boston Celtics, or when Moses Malone and uh, the Philadelphia 76ers with Dr. J, Philadelphia, those teams, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, if you will, um, Phoenix Suns, Portland, those teams were were marketed. Now it's more of a case when Michael Jordan took over, he was the marketing, he was the face of the NBA, and they, they kind of moved over to uh, marketing just players. So until the NBA decides to market teams or market rivalries, if you will, I don't see too much of a change until they go to the NBA Finals. Now, uh, the, do you think this playoff change will eliminate bad playoff matchups, particularly uh, some of the ones we see in the Eastern Conference? Uh, remains to be seen. I'm not particularly sure because I think uh, the NBA is, games of, is a game of matchups. Some teams just don't match, don't match up very well with other teams. Um, it'll be um, in the regular season. I feel that if they win, if they, um, all teams try to win every single night, they win every single night. I think the quality of team, the quality of play will be better in the regular season. But in the playoffs, it's a lot. Of, it's about coaching. It's about um, injuries, and it's also about matches, matchups, as I said before. Now, they also changed their tie-breaking procedure, making your win-loss record the number one uh, tie-breaker instead of home court advantage and whether or not you win the division. I'm wondering your thoughts on that change as well. Um, it's common sense. Uh, I think you should reward you should reward your teams for winning, kind of like uh, the um, arguments they always have for the MVP or the um, All-Star game, being voted for the All-Star game, you have to reward teams for winning winning basketball games. It, uh, it's not like they can go to, they can, uh, like uh, Orlando could go into Minnesota and say, okay, we lost, so what? No problem. As long as we win the 
the division will be okay no matter what the record is. You have to reward your teams for winning. And uh, do you think this move, if at all, will help the NBA uh, generate additional revenue or no? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think they really they really care at this moment in time. Um, I think they're probably trying to do this to um, get prepared for the uh, TV deal that's going to ha- uh, come down next year. I think they, they're trying to get ahead of the curve on that. But I don't really think the the playoff seating right now would even matter with money wise. And what are you, uh, now that this is uh, in the books, what are your uh, top five NBA headlines heading into the season? Uh, number one, I, um, will the Golden State Warriors repeat? Uh, I think um, they were a little bit lucky. Um, I think they were a little lucky um, getting the right, get, get, matching up with the right teams. A couple things uh, worked out for them. San Antonio getting beat. Uh, the Clippers basically choking on themselves uh, against the Houston Rockets, and uh, they matched up better against the Rockets. Um, number two, can Sacramento survive? And what I mean by surviving is George Carl being able to deal with DeMarcus Cousins, Rajah Rondo coming in as well. Coming in as well, I think it's going to be an explosive mix. I think it's going to be either they're going to be very, very successful or – they will implode. They'll probably be one of the worst teams in the NBA, but they will be they will be the most entertaining team. There will always be um, stories coming out of Sacramento, which is pretty much hadn't happened since Weber and um, Lottie Divac, who was was actually on the floor. Uh, number three, will will LeBron be able to lead the team, lead the Cleveland Cavaliers back to the NBA Finals? I don't think so. Um, I think Kyrie Irving's um, injuries is a problem that they can't um they cannot deal with right number four can the miami heat actually uh get back up to prominence in the eastern conference they had a ton of injuries last year chris bosh with the blood clot and also an injury that people uh, that uh, fell under the radar was john McRoberts with his uh knee injury he was supposed to come in and do well and and really space the floor at the four spot that did not happen so um can D-Wade's knees still hold up? I think Pat Riley is really, really trying to beat LeBron to an NBA title. He wants one really, really bad. And I think they may have a chance. They're trying to get rid of Mario Chalmers. So if they can get a couple of assets for Mario Chalmers, maybe they can do something out of that. And number five, can o- Oklahoma City get back to prominence in the Western Conference? We all know Kevin Durant was hurt. Uh, Russell Westbrook did a great job trying to get keep him in uh, playoff contention. But with Scott Brooks gone, they're bringing in Billy Donovan. We're going to have to see if, um, one, can everybody co- coexist, and can they deal with the fact that Kevin Durant may leave in the offseason. All righty, Ronald, we want to uh, thank you for your time this afternoon and for joining us again on the Two Man Advantage podcast, but it was a lot of fun. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. Anytime, man. Have a good day. All right, you too.